hi hello welcome back to my channel welcome back to another video i am sam if you're new thank you so much for being here happy holidays merry christmas happy new year i have some tea here switching it up from the usual coffee we're in our comfy cozy clothes did i place a random barrel behind me and light some candles on it yes i did because i love cozy season i like the vibe but I would share with you guys some of my favorite variegated plants. Uh, I feel like that also kind of fits the theme because they're kind of like frosted, you know, or they have like little chunks of snow. That can be what it looks like anyway when it comes to variegation, specifically white variegation. So anyways, I have hand selected several of my favorite variegated babies. So if this sounds like your cup of tea, stick around, hang tight, and let's jump right on in to the video. Right off the bat, let's go ahead and start with this guy. So I don't think I have featured him on my channel in a very long time. And I've had this plant for a very long time. This is one of my first ever Hoyas. This is a Hoya Pubicalix Splash. So I'm gonna try to get some up close footage for you guys, but because the lights are just so bright, just look at the splashing. Now this plant has been a decent size now for quite a while however it kind of stopped growing a while back i noticed and uh, i believe that's because it needs to be up potted it, its tendrils poking me in the eye it needs to be up potted it needs a larger pot i think that he is pretty root bound in here whenever i water it kind of comes out the drainage down at the bottom it's been in this pot for way too long i do have it on this little hoop bamboo trellis but this is a Hoya that I just think is so, so underrated. Now there's all different types of the Pubicalyx, all different varieties of them. This one is quite dusty. I should have shined your leaves. I'm sorry, buddy. It's very dusty, actually. I'm not really sure what one this is, but I know that I had purchased it uh, a few years back as a Pubicalyx Splash. And no, it's not just the lighting. It really is like this very dull, light pink color. Um, it's beautiful on some of the leaves the splashing is more like sparse and speckled and it's kind of a white color I suppose but once I gave this guy direct Sun that white turned more of this really pretty blush pink color that we see on these leaves and there's a lot of it too like it's just it's very interesting because all the leaves are different different if we look on this side of the pot it doesn't have nearly as much splashing as this side so you don't really know what you're gonna get we do have this crazy tendril here I intend on up potting this plant really soon and adding this tendril onto the trellis that I have in here so maybe it can start producing some leaves because this is a very vigorous fast growing plant whenever it's happy so I think that'll help it out a little bit and also this is a pretty inexpensive plant it's not hard to come by at all pretty easy to get your hands on you can even get like fuller pots of this for relatively cheap it's a great plant if y'all see little orbs in the camera it's not orbs it's cat hair so yeah first up I had to include my Hoya Pubicalyx splash this is definitely a classic this is Syngonium Albo Podophyllum variegata or variegated otherwise known as a Albo Syngonium. I don't really think I could do a ver favorite variegated plants video without including the Albo Syngonium because it is one of the most beautiful variegated houseplants that we can find. It is a an extremely fast grower, uh, really prolific. Uh, it's also very easy care. Syngoniums in general are very easy care. It is a plant that produces nearly snow white variegation it's it's stark white it's very white it's beautiful the clean bright white uh of the variegation in contrast with that beautiful beautiful green you never know what you're going to get which is true with a lot of variegated plants but the alpha syngonium is just it's amazing super easy to propagate they grow so fast absolutely gorgeous i decided to pair her with this pink ceramic planter i thought it was the, they were the perfect match so alpha syngonium definitely made this list Another one of my faves is this beauty, and this is my Hoya Australis Lisa. I remember this was just a wee itty bitty little like two leaf cutting 
that uh, my friend Alex from Beantown Houseplants sent me in a trade that we did uh, this spring we'll make two years ago. The Hoya Australis Lisa was at the very tip top of my wish list at the time and also at the time they were very expensive so which is ridiculous because it's such a fast growing Hoya I don't understand it at all. Anyways yeah she sent me the cutting it rooted up beautifully and now this is what we have. So obviously she is pretty long. This is all new growth since I put my velcro tape on and staked it to this pole. I moved this recently into my little dining room area under that Mars Hydro, like directly under it. And you can see the stacking of the leaves. Like down here, they're a little bit more spaced out. And then from here up, they're just like boom, 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 boom. So you can see the newest leaves there. They come in a super, super dark, beautiful, like cherry red color and um, fade to this beautiful variegated color. So the Lisa really isn't much slower of a grower than the regular Australis. So I would like to, you know, take a cutting from this and encourage it to bush out and get a little bit fuller because this is just what Hoyas in particular do. Uh, unless you, you cut them, they, you know, they'll just grow in one big old long vine and uh, which is fine it's beautiful definitely want this plant to bush out and get a little bit more full so we'll see what i end up doing with her i'm sure in a chore video or something we'll tackle this this cutie patootie he was a little bit thirsty so i had to go ahead and give him a water before i filmed this so he's a little droopy right now but typically he stands at attention so this is a variegated rabbit foot maranta prayer plant um and this is probably if i had to choose like my favorite Maranta, at least that I currently have in my collection, it would probably definitely be this one. It would definitely be this one. And it's just different. Like the typical Marantas have the striping down through the leaves. This one, not so much. It really just has the little rabbit foot pattern and then the variegation. So let me find some nice variegated leaves for you. This right here is one of my favorites. This is a smaller leaf, but look how cute that leaf is. The variegation on this is so pretty and not every leaf will come in with variegation. You can cut the plant back if you notice it starting to revert to all green. But the, the one thing that I love most about this plant, if we can take a look at this leaf here, um, some of the leaves that do have variegation also have like this red, reddish pink color mixed in with the creamy white. All of the leaves don't have it. Here's some more of his leaves. It's amazing. It's not going to focus, so I'm definitely going to have to get some B-roll for y'all. But this is just such a cool Maranta. And like I said, some of the leaves have like more like splashing or speckles throughout them. And then others have little sectorial chunks like this one here. I think it honestly has to do with the lighting, like how much light you're giving them. Again, another really easy going plant, especially for a prayer plant, to be in the prayer plant family. This one's just super easy. I mean, I do notice that he will start crisping and, you know, curling and crisping his leaves if I let him dry out too long. Like if I skip a watering for, you know, too many days, he will. He'll crisp up some of his leaves, but he really doesn't ever stop growing. Variegated Maranta, rabbit foot Maranta. It's beautiful. I would like to move him out. I currently have him like on a bottom shelf in there under a grow light, and you don't really get to see, you know, him when you just walk around the house. I don't really get to see him and admire his beauty. So I would definitely like to move him out uh, somewhere where he's more visible, where I can just kind of walk by and admire him. Um, so I may do that now that I have him pulled out, but I love this guy. Had to include him because definitely, again, another extremely underrated houseplant. Good example of that red on the leaf. Do you guys see that right there? It's like a pinkish red. It's very subtle, but it's um, it's really pretty. Moved a little bit closer because I felt like I was just a little bit too far back. So this little guy, or gal, should I say, is actually a an orchid, a Phalaenopsis orchid, believe it or not, and it goes by variegated Phalaenopsis coffee, C-O-F-F-E-Y, coffee. Yeah, so I think there's also more to the name if you want to include it, like something Yinglin coffee, I don't know, something like that, and it's actually quite uncommon. I 
never really see these in other people's videos or hear about other people talk about them like other plant enthusiasts never really see them on Instagram whenever I actually ran across this in Walmart I was like whoa because I never see different types of orchids where I live at all other than your standard green phalaenopsis of course so I seen this I was pretty sure it's a phalaenopsis because the growth pattern is the same the leaf uh, the leaves are pretty well the same so this is a mini orchid it's one of the smaller ones it doesn't get big and huge which is great for me because I don't have a lot of space and it produces really cute little dainty purple flowers it was in bloom whenever I picked it up I got this for like $9.99 you guys anyways I seen it and I was like oh my gosh this is amazing this is so cool for $10 are you kidding me so I got it and I got online and immediately started doing my research to figure out what kind of orchid this was and yeah it goes by coffee it just has this neat yellow rim around the leaves but also you guys my favorite part so whenever I got it these leaves were newer and they still had this tinge to them so if you look right here she's actually putting off a, an adorable little baby leaf do you guys see that how cute is it uh, I moved her in my grow tent and yeah oh I'm also noticing a new flower spike coming in right there so that's super exciting can y'all see that she's giving me a new leaf and a new flower spike amazing if you look on this new leaf you will see this violet purple uh, tinge through the variegation through the leaf it's like that on both sides as the leaf grows that purple will stay on the leaf it'll just go th all throughout the variegation on the rimming of the leaf and then once the leaf is more mature that purple will kind of go away now there is still um, some purple along the rim of this leaf I can see y'all probably aren't gonna be able to see it but it is there the brighter the light the more of that purple will come in with the variegation I love variegated plants in general you guys but whenever there's like a special a special little bonus color added in um, I'm all about it I just I think it's the coolest thing ever I love I just love colors so and I love purple pink red whenever I put her in my grow tent that's when I notice this new leaf coming in so really stoked about it i love this plant the leaves are just so pretty like they're so glossy and shiny they almost have like a matte look to them and i also am really enjoying the way the leaves are kind of like curled back i didn't even know this plant existed before i found it here we have two plants two of the same so these are obviously uh pink princess philodendrons and uh, I feel like it's kind of controversial because you either love or you hate the pink princess philodendron pretty much a lot of people hate the plant they don't get the hype they don't like the pink they're just they're not that into it a lot of people think they're hideous a lot of people don't like them because they can revert and then there's people like me who just can't get enough of them so I have owned several of these over the last two to three years I had a really big beautiful one it was probably the most beautiful pink princess I've ever seen because the leaves would come in so dark like almost a black color and then like this bubblegum pink it was just it was so beautiful like I had so many half moons on that plant but you know something that I tend to do I will chop up a lot of my plants if I am just like in a mood to buy some new wishlist plants sometimes you know yeah I'll just buy a wishlist plant but many of the times I will choose to take a cutting from some of the plants that I've been growing and sell or trade it trade them for plants that I you know want to buy for new plants and then because I know those plants will grow back right anyways I ended up chopping up that pink princess until I had nothing left of it basically so I got more so this is one from Aeroid Asia so this is a Indonesian uh, pink princess which I have heard from you guys mostly that these are more stable and they put out a lot more pink I don't know if that's true or not but I guess we'll find out this plant took a little while it took a couple months to acclimate you know to its new home after being shipped in the mail but it is finally starting to grow you guys and it hasn't lost any more of its leaves so this one's kind of getting a little bit chlorotic but it's been such a slow process I'm not even mad at it um I noticed uh few days ago that it is pushing out its first new leaf in my care so that's really exciting I can't wait to see what it looks like definitely cannot tell if it has any pink pink in it yet but this is the first pink princess and then this is one that I had gotten right before this one a month or so prior uh, and I knew this one was gonna be sent to me but I couldn't help myself um, so I did a plant swap a trade and I did do an unboxing on my channel I'm pretty sure I got two single leaf 
cuttings of Pink Princess. I can't even remember what I traded her for, like what I gave her of mine, but there were two single leaf mid cuttings, mind you, mid, so they didn't have growth points. They had to produce their own. Um, so this was the first one right here, just this one leaf, and then there was another one over here. I potted them together, and it looked kind of similar. It may have had a little bit more pink in it, and both of them immediately started they push out a growth point. They pushed out a leaf right out of the stem that they already had, like the middle base stem. The cat actually knocked off the other leaf after it started actively growing. I was pretty upset about that, definitely. These leaves here are the first cutting, so it just gave me this leaf, and then here's the newest one, and it doesn't have any pink on it, but it's, it's fine, I'm not mad at it, okay? But then over here, and it's growing so fast, this is living in my humidity box, over here was the second plant, so these leaves right here. Like I said, the mother leaf is now gone, but yeah, these are the leaves that she's given me so far. This one, and this was the newest leaf with this little pink stripe here at the tip, and then we do have a new leaf, if I can get it at an angle where you can see, right here. Both of them actively growing. Now, one issue that I have had with my pink princesses is the, this happens with philodendron in general, but especially the pink princesses, the leaves do tend to get stuck, like the new leaves will get stuck and kind of like do the inchworm and um, they can really jack themselves up like that. So the reason for that is just simply humidity. This is one philodendron that is definitely going to ask of you more than just light and love like it wants humidity to grow its best one thing i've noticed if i have a pink princess just kind of chilling living out in my household humidity it will do that it will put out itty bitty tiny leaves it'll grow slower and the leaves will get hung up on themselves pretty much and um so it's kind of crucial that if you want or have a pink princess maybe it's not doing the best give us some extra humidity and I'm not even just talking like buy a humidifier I'm talking grow tent Ikea cabinet humidity box gallon plastic bag like ziploc bag whatever you have it's going to thank you for it I promise so pink princess definitely had to make this list because it's one of my all-time favorite variegated plants and it probably always will be so here's another newbie this is also from aeroid market this is my variegated philodendron giganteum yeah i was so stoked uh, whenever they told me they were sending me one of these y'all and if you watched that unboxing i'm sure you could definitely tell how excited i was so i had a new leaf kind of pushing up out of the stem this is it right here this is that new leaf it's beautiful the variegation on this is more spread out rather than sectorial it's kind of mixed all through the leaf and through the green. And it's not white either. It's a yellow type variegation, kind of similar to the Painted Lady, which is also one of my favorite variegated plants. And you guys, I'm sorry, you have to excuse my voice. I'm getting super hoarse. So yeah, I'm actually having a surgery. I'm having my tonsils removed in a couple weeks, like around, that's on the 3rd of January after the new year. So I'm actually really nervous about that. It should have been done when I was a kid, but it wasn't. I've had nothing but issues. And I'm wondering is my, if my voice is gonna sound completely different after I have my tonsils removed, because they're huge. They're huge. And if I talk for very long at all, this is my second video like this evening back to back. So that's why my voice is getting kind of hoarse, because if I talk very much at all, it yeah, it just gets very raspy and hoarse. So anyways, I just thought I'd throw that in there because I'm annoying myself at this point. So it had all of these gorgeous leaves before. Um, it's also a good thing that it's that it, the variegation is like this rather than sectorial because, and rather than white as well, because it means the plant can still photosynthesize really well. It's a fast grower because that's kind of an issue I'm sure a lot of you know if you own variegated plants. Uh, a lot of variegated plants are slower growing because of that, for that reason, especially if there's a lot of chunky white variegation in the leaves. This one seems like it's gonna be a really vigorous grower anyway. It's already working on pushing out this next new leaf. I love it, it's just, it's so cool. And I'll be super stoked whenever this guy gets like massive because my green gigantium is already like super sized compared to what it was whenever I got it. So really fast grower, really pretty variegation, and I don't have to worry about these leaves turning crispy or browning and dying on me because there's not enough variegation in the leaves to do that, to cause that. So really cool. He's awesome. 
Ooh, I love that new leaf so much. This is also a newbie. I know, I know you guys from Arrowweed Market, and this is a peace lily. This is um, Spathophyllum Picasso, and it's pretty amazing. I did start to notice, you guys, some what I think is like bacterial stuff happening in my grow tent. I do have a fan in there. Somebody asked me that in a comment on one of my last videos. Yes, I have a fan in there, and I have the vents open, but the fan's down low on the ground. I need to get the other plant stands I'm wanting to get like ASAP, and I need to be able to move the fan up to a higher surface and have it rotating around to kind of, you know, circulate the air and push out old air and suck in the new air. Anyways, all that to say, I did notice some browning on some of the older leaves on this one. I caught it early, so I think we're good. So I'm gonna be removing these leaves, you guys, which is just so unfortunate, especially this one, it's beautiful. And I've already removed several, you can see, look at him. He's underneath a shelf, so he's kind of leaning towards the grow light. Definitely need to get another light up in there or a brighter light, perhaps, but he put off this, this leaf literally a couple of weeks ago. Definitely a white variegated plant, so you're gonna see stuff like this, like the browning on the white, and then also, He's in a really, really airy, chunky mix, so he's drying out a little bit too fast. Peace lilies don't like to dry out like that, like other aeroids. So I really need to put him in something less well-draining so he's not drying out so quickly and losing leaves. But yeah, this is just kind of something that's going to happen if you have a plant that's highly variegated and it's giving you, you know, mostly all white leaves, which is just something to note. But it's beautiful, isn't it? So this was his last newest leaf here. It is literally practically all white and then it has some like lime green splashes throughout it and then this is the leaf it's just now given me it's still currently actually unfurling and it's all white as well you guys so it does make me a little bit nervous I don't want him to like crisp up every single leaf and not be able to properly photosynthesize because all of his leaves are coming in white so we're just gonna kind of have to take it a day at a time and see what happens there this leaf is so beautiful look at that it's like the perfect amount of green and white. Amazing. And then you have like this minty green right here because it's like a mix of the green and white. Oh, so pretty. So yeah, this is a, a really, really cool, also quite uh, kind of uncommon houseplant and uh, I'm obsessed with it. I've been loving it ever since I unboxed it. And I just hope that all of its beautiful leaves don't crisp up because that would be such a shame but it's amazing, so definitely on the list. It's a plant we have not seen in a while, and uh, yet again, right? This is my beautiful Monstera Thai Constellation that I unboxed going on three years ago now. This was an import, I think I got it from Thailand. I paid 100 bucks for this little tiny baby, like 115 with like shipping and the Fido and all that. Got it and it had like three or four 80 bitty, I'm talking tiny little non-finistrated leaf it was the cutest thing ever and now he's grown into this the thai constellation the variegation is much more stable so you don't have to worry about them reverting like you do uh the album monsteras i also have an album that i'm loving as well but i can't show y'all all my house plants okay i gotta save some for upcoming videos yeah, this leaf is really beautiful. So the Thai Constellation has definitely more of a creamy, almost yellowish uh, colored variegation rather than white. The elbow is definitely more of a white sectorial variegation. I love that some of the leaves come in with sectorial chunks like that and this, and then we have this leaf that is making its way out. It was gorgeous though while it lasted. It actually lasted quite a long time. Um, here's a little leaf and then you have leaves that are more like this and this which is more spread out um, and then it just has those little hints and little chunks of that creamy variegation it's gorgeous this was his newest leaf here which is getting to be a really good size I'm just so very proud of this plant and how far he has came since I unboxed him uh, yeah, very proud of him. I definitely prefer the Thai Constellation over the Albo. He's awesome. He will forever be a favorite of mine. Now, he definitely does need a water. That's why his leaves are kind of curling inward, so just pay no mind to that. But Thai Constellation, highly recommend. And actually, this coming year, I think Coaster Farms is going to be uh, putting out 
big, beautiful, mature Thai constellations at your local big box and grocery stores. So if you have this plant on your wish list and you just haven't wanted to pay the price for it, just wait because these are going to be available to us just like the Scandapsis trivii moonlights and many other plants have become available to us. Highly recommend, amazing plant. I wish he was watered so he looked a little bit more handsome, but it's totally fine. All right, guys, that's pretty well going to do it for this video. Hope y'all enjoyed. Let me know what your all-time favorite variegated house plant is, if you even like variegated plants at all. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see y'all again very, very soon in my next video. Y'all are the best. I love you guys. Bye!